GLP-1s are really good at, and sa at safely managing patients with dysglycemia in type 2 diabetes. So, so I think it's an important drug from that aspect. So if we're getting additional benefits in terms of cardiovascular and renal benefits, that for me means it's, it, it becomes super important. Because however good SGLT2 inhibitors are, if you've got advanced CKD, you've got an EGFR below 45, they're not good glucose lowering agents. So for me, my patients now, not only does this help with their glucose, it makes them live longer if they've got a CKD uh, comorbidity. Hi everyone, and welcome to this uh, new GoggleOps podcast, where we're gonna be focusing really on GLP-1s and kidney outcomes. Uh, and specifically results from a recent trial that was announced, uh, the results were announced, the uh, semaglutide in chronic kidney disease trial, or FLOW. Um, and really, I guess this stems back to a lot of data that we have around CKD in type 2 diabetes, predominantly from other molecules like uh, non corticoid receptor antagonists and um, SGLT2 inhibitors. But actually, we've always had a limited data with regards to GLP-1s, and we're always wondering what do they show in the setting of CKD? Well, we have an answer now. And this is a trial, a randomized control trial, looking at people with type 2 diabetes and CKD at high risk of kidney failure, uh, cardiovascular events, and death. And then the primary outcome is essentially whether, whether one milligram of semaglutide uh, resulted in a composite benefit of kidney and cardiovascular outcomes. Um, I'm joined by Patrick Holmes. And really, Patrick, can you take us through a little bit about the main findings from this trial? Yeah, so this, so the primary outcome, as you said, which was one of these composites, they always seem to be composites uh, there, uh, but driven primarily by kidney outcomes. And we saw a statistically significant reduction in cardiovascular, uh, in that primary composite outcome. And it's about a 24% uh, relative risk reduction. Um, uh, perhaps we'll come back uh, and say, well, how does that compare with other studies? But but the, not only did we get that primary outcome, we got secondary confirmatory outcomes and the kidney specific um, outcomes that showed, again, a 21% risk reduction and cardiovascular outcomes, 29% risk reduction. Really interesting in terms of EGFR slope, something which I, perhaps a few years ago, I, I didn't know what the hell an EGFR slope is, but I've got used to looking at them now. And there was that reduction of an EGSR, uh, EGFR slope in the semaglutide group. It's worth pointing out that that slope probably took a little while to properly develop, um, um, a bit slower perhaps than some of the other studies, but it was, uh, but this was a 3.4 year study, but it was a one millimole reduction in that slope, which of course is important if we're looking at, at long-term outcomes. But the most important thing I think for me and all my patients is, that, does this make me live longer, Doc? And it does. So we, there was that reduction of mortality by a fifth. Um, so this is that's important. And I suppose another important thing my patients uh, want to know is about safety. Overall, the um, adverse outcomes were fewer in the semaglutide group. But there's one one I think I'd, I just want to highlight, which was there was that numerically higher increase in adverse eye problems, which we've seen in other GLP-1 studies. So, so I think that's, that's what I took away from that study in terms of the, the main findings. You mentioned about that, uh, that retinopathy risk. It never seems to quite go away until we get a more dedicated trial. And we always hear more and more, uh, you know, we, we, get, we get focused a bit on, uh, pun intended, we get focused a bit on, uh, on, on that side of things. So we notice it all the time. But I think it is relevant and is something just to, you know, until we can get more definitive evidence, we will always be aware of. So really, this, this, this molecule, this semaglutide, in the setting of CKD and type 2, I think it's the key thing. It's, it's, it's CKD in type 2 diabetes. Um, it's shown renal benefit, cardiovascular benefit, mortality benefit, which really goes to say, well, I mean, it's fairly conclusive as a, just as a singular trial from, from the way it was run and what findings we found. What does this translate to in terms of, does this translate to clinical practice and, 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 and how so? So I think it does. I think before we go on to that, I th I th a little bit, and perhaps I should have expanded on this, this was a, the, the population, as well as having type 2 diabetes and CKD, were well managed. Certainly in terms of, of some of the drugs you've already mentioned, most of them, 90% were on either an ACE inhibitor or an ARB, half were on an MRA, only 15%, uh, about that number, were on an SGLT2 inhibitor. So uh, uh, perhaps once I've finished, I want you to um, just tell me what you think about that and if that asks some questions. Um, what does it, how does it apply? Well, these GLP-1s are really good at, and sa at safely managing patients with dysglycemia in type 2 diabetes. So, so I think it's an important drug from that aspect. So if we're getting additional benefits in terms of cardiovascular and renal benefits, that 
that for me means it's it, it becomes super important because however good SGLT2 inhibitors are, if you've got advanced CKD, you've got an EGFR below 45, they're not good glucose lowering agents. We need those which cause a low risk of, of hypoglycemia as opposed to using drugs like insulin or sulfonylureas, which, which unfortunately you know, do increase the risk, including severe hypoglycemia in that kidney disease population. So for me, that the outcome of this is probably, it's really, perhaps this is a bold thing to say, I think maybe we are at the stage where we're now talking about four pillars of, of DKD, um, um, but, but maybe there are some questions there. But, so for me, my patients now, not only does this help with their glucose, it makes them live longer if they've got a CKD uh, comorbidity. Uh, thanks for mentioning, Patrick. I was going to bring up the SLD2s at some point, but yes, um, one of the questions or one of the concerns, one of the areas of this trial is that 15% of people, as you said, were on SLD2 inhibitors, and we know that the evidence for SLD2 inhibitors in CKD and you know, reducing the progression of CKD is is, is probably as as good as it ever as there ever is any data for any kind of disease class in in, in certainly of type two diabetes. Um, and you know, they still will remain a mainstay of, of CKD management in CKD management generally, but also in type 2 diabetes. Um, but as you said, GLP-1s have always had that extra benefit of that glucose lowering aspect. So in the setting of type 2 diabetes and CKD, they become very valid. The 15% people who were on SGLT2s in this trial makes it difficult to get any, I guess, significant subgroup. I mean, there will be subgroup analyses, I'm sure, um, but it's difficult to get any, to understand how well powered that would be and whether we can get anything conclusive. We won't, but it'll be it'll perhaps point us in that direction. But until we get these medications wide, widely used in this setting, where they become truly the standard of care, then any new molecules, when we compare them, we won't be able to get that right data because we won't have enough people or we have to design specific trials where they do have to have a minimum, minimum requirement of people on their shelter twos or GLP-1s so that we can get this data. Um, and it's difficult to know whether this is independent of that effect or not. There are a few other things with this trial. Um, we know minimum cortical receptor antagonists as well, MRAs, non seroidals again in the future if they if they're mentioned as a pillar of ckd management uh, in type 2 diabetes what is the combined effect of all these medications as well like in heart failure we've seen the you know uh you know all the combined combinations of these therapies what about in ckd do we have do we have that data no will we i don't know um and also this you know is it all weight loss or not in the trial they do mention that the the, the changes in cystatin C and, 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 and creatinine were, were independent of weight loss. Um, the data says that people with BMI over 30 benefited more than those less than 30. Um, it's difficult to know exactly the magnitude of weight loss as an impact. Again, I would like subgroup analysis of this, even though they, they say perhaps it's, it's not as relevant. Um, and I guess also now that we're talking about CKD and type 2, what about in those with just CKD? What about those with obesity and CKD with the higher strength, semaglutide and things like that? These are the kind of questions that as all good researchers, we say, ask small questions and points us in directions of where to go further. These are some of the things that come to mind. But, um, you know, I can take nothing away from the findings of this trial and, and the fact that it does show significant benefits in, in people with CKD and type 2 diabetes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, it's hugely valid uh, points in to, that you've raised. Now, I think the SGLT2 in Ivita 1 uh, is, is probably super important. It was only, I mean, first of all, why is the only 15% of people on these life extending treatments in a population which we've seen data now for several years so so that's a question in its own right so um and, and number two i suppose is because the numbers are small it, it, it's difficult to fully elucidate so that it remains unanswered questions do we need all those uh pillars do they all add up together I, I looked at the paper to see if there was actually, we, because they do highlight the different subgroups with metformin, which there was no difference. SGLT2 inhibitor, they said there's no significant difference, although the hazard ratios are different. In fact, the hazard ratio for SGLT2 inhibitors was over one. Um, so, it, 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 but broad confidence uh, uh, limits because it was a small subgroup. Um, so perhaps there is a difference there. And then, uh, on, but we got nothing for MRAs, so they've not told us any breakdown there, and that was fifty percent. So I would have expected um, uh, that. Uh, but so yeah, so I think these are key findings. Just to pick up this issue uh, that you mentioned in terms of CKD and um, uh, and 
uh, uh, semaglutide outside a, a type 2 population. We do have, we don't have a dedicated trial on this, but we do have some data now coming from the SELECT study, which of course did have patients um, who didn't have diabetes. And there we're seeing very similar benefits in terms of cardiovascular uh, benefit uh, and uh, some mortality benefits. But, but in particular, the, the, the paper uh, came out uh, which showed that we're seeing some renal benefits. Of course, this, is, uh, this wasn't a primary outcome. It wasn't what the study was designed for. But there's, there are some... So what we really need, I suppose, is a dedicated study um, in a non-diabetic population, if I'm allowed to use that term, um, who've got CKD. Because I, the, obviously most people with CKD do not have diabetes. Um, uh, and, and it's an important group. And as we get better access to drugs like semaglutide, and indeed even semaglutide, then um, it, I, I, I suspect how we utilize these and which people we prioritize in terms of giving access to it, um, you know, will uh, needs to include people outside of diabetes. I think that's where the data is taking us with this uh, molecule. So really to summarize, do we go with the flow or not? <laughs> For me, I'm going to go with the flow. Have been doing before, but, but, but this gives me even more reason to be using these agents in that CKD population. I think I would agree with you there. Semaglutide and sending of CKD and type 2 diabetes has shown benefits across the spectrum of renal and cardiovascular and mortality. So um, something for us to look forward to in future guidelines and future clinical practice, I'm sure. But thank you all for uh, spending time listening to us about talking about this and stay tuned for more um, detailed discussions in future from Gockle Docs. Thank you. <laughs>